My name is Elizabeth Bisuti, and I'm the director of the Domains and Jurisdiction Program at the Internet and Jurisdiction Policy Network. The Internet and Jurisdiction Policy Network is the multi-stakeholder organization addressing the tension between the cross-border nature of the Internet and national jurisdictions. Today, I'll be presenting a brief educational resource on the effects of action at the DNS level. This resource is useful for public and private actors wishing to understand how the domain name system works in practice and the effects of the limited repertoire of actions that can be undertaken at the DNS level. It's been developed by the Internet and Jurisdiction Policy Network Domains and Jurisdiction Program Contact Group, where over 30 senior level members from governments, internet companies, technical operators, civil society, leading universities, and international organizations from around the world work together to address cross-border DNS level action to address abuses. The domain name system, the DNS, is the phone book of the internet. Instead of having to memorize IP addresses, users use domain names to locate and access content on websites. The DNS is part of the technical layer of the internet, and like other aspects of the internet ecosystem, it is not immune to misuse or abuse. DNS operators receive requests to take action at the DNS level from a variety of sources for technical or content-related abuses. But action at the DNS level is often not a fully effective way to address technical abuses or problematic content. When a domain name operator, registry or registrar, takes action at the DNS level, the consequences are severe and often imprecise. Taking action at the DNS level should only be considered when it can be reliably determined that the domain name itself is used with a clear intent of significant abuse of conduct. In the educational resource, we'll look at the basic functioning of the DNS, the limited set of actions available to operators to tackle abuses, and their consequences. So let's take a look at how things work. The basic functioning of the DNS. Registrants, you or I or anyone who registers a domain name, does so through a registrar. Registrars accept registration information and forward the information to the registry including the information necessary to map the domain name to the server of the corresponding IP address. Ordinarily, registrants can update registration information through their registrar. Registries maintain the zone file or the definitive database of domain names for a given top-level extension, such as .com, .org, .uk, and others. Now that the domain name is registered, what actions or commands, if you will, can be implemented by DNS operators at the DNS level to address abuses? Lock. As I noted a moment ago, registrants can ordinarily make updates to registration information, including server information. But when a domain is locked, the registrant cannot do so. Locking the domain means that it cannot be transferred, deleted, pointed to another server, or have its details modified. But importantly, the domain name will still resolve, meaning that the website associated with the domain is still reachable by users via the DNS. An example of why lock would be used. Lock is used in an abuse or alleged abuse situation to preserve the basic details, the status quo of the registration information, until the merits of the underlying claim of abuse can be substantiated. Often, the lock command is referenced in temporary restraining orders. Hold also sometimes referred to as suspend or suspending a domain name. When a domain name is placed on hold, the domain name is removed from the zone file and will no longer resolve on the public internet. If the hold was placed in error, the action can be reversed and the domain and associated website content are restored. Note that when a domain name is placed in hold status, it will nonetheless be reachable by its IP address. It's a bit like removing a name from a phone directory. There's no longer an easy way to access the web address and associated content, but importantly, if one knows the physical or the IP address, the site can still be reached. Nonetheless, the hold command has drastic consequences. It has a disabling effect on the domain and any associated website. Redirect. The redirect command allows edits to the zone file to change the name servers for a, a given domain name. This means that associated services and web traffic information are redirected without the consent of the registrant. The redirect command is often used for sync holding, logging traffic to identify victims of cybercrime activity. Transfer. 
In the context of abuse, the transfer command is used to transfer the domain from one registrar to another. The domain is transferred from a losing registrar to a gaining registrar. Once the domain name arrives at the gaining registrar, the gaining registrar places the domain in the account of a registrant. Note that this registrant may or may not be the same registrant as the one at the losing registrar. In the context of addressing abuse, the transfer command can be used to take the domain out of the hands of a registrant who is using the domain to commit abuse. And finally, delete or deletion. Deleting a domain name is an extreme action and not generally recommended without careful consideration. That's because the delete command cannot be reversed. Upon delete, the domain is purged from the zone file. More importantly, when a domain is deleted, it becomes available to be re-registered once again, potentially by the same registrant who used or misused the domain for abusive purposes. That concludes my talk. I hope you found it interesting and informative. The educational resource will be particularly useful for government representatives who may wish to add this document to training materials, for internet companies who may wish to raise awareness of how the DNS works and who may wish to post this on their website, for representatives from academia who may also wish to include this in training modules. If you have questions, comments, or would like to discuss, please contact me at bisuti at internetjurisdiction.net. Thanks.